The idea of having history speak to us is quite amazing. It's easy to lament sort of the world that has passed and to be sort of nostalgic and sort of kitschy nostalgic. But I say we live, this is a great period where we can partake of so many um, cultures and experiences so easily. And uh, that, that actually, if anything, should um, lead to a world in which we understand each other more. Funny how it hasn't yet, but it should. I was born in uh, Iran, I was born in Tehran, and uh, at a young age uh, came with my parents um, to the United States. When I had found my interest in, shall we say, Baroque music, sort of earlier music in the harpsichord and the organ, um, I was drawn sort of for various reasons to come to Europe. I get asked the question a lot, well, you know, you're of this origin, but you're doing, you know, music that's sort of, you know, specifically European is what you're doing sort of culturally specific. that I'm drawn to this music. What does it say about my background? On a specific artistic or musical level, I would just say this spoke to me, just like music from any culture speaks to anyone of any background. The new generation artists um, has really made me sort of reconsider in a way um, what I want to do as a musician. It's also uh, made me realize my latent interest in wanting to be a soloist and, and to have my solo activities as a harpsichordist um, and related early keyboard instruments really be at the forefront of what I want to do. that I get to um, record and broadcast programs of really any music, and also having opportunities to do things that I normally don't get to do, like record on the organ. So over the last, uh, over the last year and a half, I've been living in Oxford. I specifically moved here to take up a post as artist in residence. Um, the fellowship enables one, specifically with what I do musically, of course, I get to use the archives and the Bodleian and um, to find, you know, sort of unearthed music. There's nothing like seeing the composer's original intentions through his notation, and um, we should not let anybody stand between us and the composer. The pinnacle of all music, really, is, is Bach. I think it was uh, Aaron Copland who said that uh, in Bach's music, we witness the closest to perfection that's possible. One could spend one's life just playing and thinking about that music, and it would be w well spent. I would say that would not be a uh, waste. I don't think I could ever stand playing a recital, or I could rarely stand playing a recital without some Bach, even a, even a small piece, even an encore, something. I've noticed when I um, don't play Bach, I just, there's not that sense of spiritual investment in what I'm doing. And um, maybe that's my problem, I don't really know, but I'd like to, I'd like to think that uh, maybe we have, a, we have a connection, I don't know. Well, the average harpsichord that I guess you're performing on, if you're touring and performing, generally would be a, a modern copy, a 20th century, or well now 21st century um, copy of an instrument. There are good 
harpsichords built on historic principles. In, um, in most major cities, and in, in, in all major cities really, I would say in, in Europe, in the United States certainly. So we are lucky in that respect because of the interest in Baroque music and Baroque and Rena Renaissance music. Um, there are, well, there are fleets of instruments to be rented. People travel with their instruments. And certainly, um, compared to 50 years ago, even 30 or 20 years ago, it's, um, it's, it's much simpler and I think much more, um, much more possible to be a touring concert harpsichordist. Well, we are in the Holywell Music Room, which is in Oxford. It's the oldest purpose-built uh, hall for music in uh, Europe. Haydn, for example, rehearsed here. Haydn did actually play at the Holy Well. It's a very special hall, and um, it's been pr preserved in more or less historic uh, circumstances. Uh, and so it's a very, uh, I would say, it's congenial to the performance on the harpsichord. We think we're so special when we figured out something in the modern age. We think we're the first people who've done it. Um, just because something's written now doesn't mean it's better than something a hundred years ago, nor is something a hundred years ago better than now. I mean, uh, you know, kitschy nostalgia and sort of uh, ignorant ideas of progress are really bedfellows. And so I, I hope that maybe what I do would, um, would result in us discarding those notions. When you're at the beginning of um, your development of a musician, hopefully this remains throughout your life as a musician, your musical, artistic life. Um, you almost feel like you have all these things that you want to say, and you're, it, you're sort of bursting with, with, with a desire to share these things, and that's, uh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs>